Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. And in this video, we are going to be learning about atoms and elements and also protons, neutrons, and electrons, which make up atoms. <music> If you walk around your neighborhood uh, or anywhere, you're going to see a lot of different things, a lot, a lot of different things, right? Uh, I mean, there's trees and grass and rocks and sidewalk and uh, the asphalt and, you know, cars driving by that are made out of metal and animals. There's a lot of different things and they all feel different. Some of them are soft and some are squishy and some are not, some are hard and uh, you know, bumpy or whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of different materials and some, you know, are edible and some aren't edible. And what are all of these things made out of? Everything in the universe, everything that you encounter, even though they are so incredibly different, different colors and uh, consistencies and, you know, interact with the environment differently, but yet they're all made of just three main things, three little tiny subatomic particles that are called protons, neutrons, and electrons. So before we talk about that, though, let's back up a little bit, talk about something called elements. So in the universe, there are uh, main ingredients that make up uh, all the other stuff that are called elements. And these are the basic ingredients. And there are way more than three elements. Uh, there's more than a hundred elements in the universe. And elements are, uh, you can think of them like pure ingredients. Okay, they're, they're made of a single type of atom, uh, each element. So for example, gold is an element and it is made of only gold atoms. Okay. Uh, I don't know, oxygen is an element, and it's made of oxygen atoms. Uh, carbon, or silver, or aluminum, if you're British. Aluminum. Um, you know, there's, there's several. Neon, uh, argon. So all of these things are elements, and for example, neon is made of only neon atoms. Silver is made of only silver atoms. Okay, And I can mix these elements, and in another video we'll talk about compounds and molecules. I can mix these elements to, well, compounds and molecules are two different things, but anyway. Uh, I can mix these elements together to make different things. I, I can use them like ingredients to make an infinite number of materials, you know, I would say thousands, but it's way more than thousands of different kinds of materials, different kinds of rock, like quartz uh, is made out of silicon and oxygen. And I'm not sure if I'm forgetting what else is in it, but I think that's actually all, uh, which is a type of rock that combines different elements together. Okay, so think of elements like a basic ingredient. And there are more than 100 elements that combine to make a bazillion different kinds of everything that wood and flesh and mushrooms and everything that's out there is made of these uh, just uh, these handful of elements. Well, as I said a minute ago, the elements themselves can be broken down into smaller bits that and there are only three of them, three ingredients. Uh, that make up the these elements. So if I take an element and I chop it up like I am a fruit ninja, chop it, chop it, chop it up into smaller and smaller pieces, uh, eventually, so I, and it could be any element, let's just say gold, because, you know, everybody likes gold, right? So I take some gold and I chop it up. I break it in half. 
And then I break it in half, and then I break it in half, and then I break it in half, and I break it in half. Smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. Well, eventually, I'm going to get to the tiniest piece of gold uh, that I can get to be, without making it not gold anymore. And that is uh, called an atom. The smallest piece of an element is called an atom. A-T-O-M, atom. Not A-D-A-M. That is uh, human. But A-T-O-M. Atom is the smallest piece of an element. Okay. Well, what is an atom of gold versus an atom of silver or an atom of oxygen? Again, what makes these atoms different? The answer is uh, how their protons, neutrons, and electrons are arranged. So in the universe, we have a bunch of things called protons, neutrons, and electrons. These are subatomic particles, and they're the same. So all the protons are identical to each other. All the neutrons are identical to each other. And all the electrons out there in this vast universe are identical to each other. And these three things come together to make everything very different things. Three, Just three ingredients. That's pretty incredible to think about. Okay, three Identical things, I mean, not, the electrons are different than the protons, but the, all the electrons are the same, all the neutrons are the same, all the protons are the same, and yet they combine to make a petrillion, which is not a real number, uh, different things in the universe. So let's talk about how that happens, because that's kind of cool that that can even, you know, that they can combine to make so many different things. They're like little Legos that build everything. Well, how do they do that? So protons are these tiny little uh, particles, subatomic particles that have a positive charge and they have a mass. Uh, you need to remember both of those things. Both those things are important. Okay, A positive charge, and we'll talk about why that's important in a minute, and a mass. Mass means that they have, um, I want to say weight. They do have weight, but mass and weight are not the same thing. Uh, but uh, it means that they have substance that gravity can be attracted to. Okay, They have something you can touch. I mean, you can't really touch them, but, but uh, they have, they're physical material that they're made out of. So they have a positive charge, and they have mass of one. Electrons are these even smaller things than protons. They're teensy tiny. They have a negative charge. And incidentally, their negative charge is exactly equal to the positive charge of the protons. So they balance each other out. Okay, an electron has a negative charge of, let's say, one. And they do have a mass, but barely. They're so tiny that they're barely have a registrable mass. In fact, for a long time, we thought they didn't have a mass, but then we realized they did. Uh, but it's very, 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 very tiny. Okay, so they have a negative charge. Electrons have a negative charge. Think of protons, pro and uh, P starts with P, right? And positive starts with P. So you're going to remember protons have a positive charge because they start with P, the letter P, proton positive. Electrons have a negative charge, and I don't have a way for you to remember that, but just they're the one that aren't protons, right? And then neutrons. Uh, neutrons are the third subatomic particle. Neutrons also have a mass. They have a mass of one. They have the mass that's the same. They're the same roughly size as a proton, but they don't have a charge. They have a neutral. So neutron sounds like neutral. So you're going to remember neutrons have a neutral charge. They do not have an electric charge. Okay. Well, in another video, we talk about how positives and negatives are attracted to each other. That is called electromagnetic energy. Positives and negatives are attracted to each other through electromagnetic energy. Well, if protons have a positive charge, because they start with the letter P, electrons have a negative charge, what's going to happen? So if I'm a proton and I'm floating through the universe and then I look off in the distance and I see this very attractive electron 
I'm like, ooh, look at that beautiful electron. I am attracted to that beautiful electron. And the electron is attracted to me, except that the electron is shy and it doesn't know what to do. So it just orbits around me forever. Okay, Orbits and orbits and orbits forever. So electrons orbit protons, and that is an atom. It's an atom of hydrogen, by the way. So here's the deal. What makes one atom different than another? Well, it's how many protons are in the center of the atom. And we call the center of the atom the nucleus. So if I have one proton in the center of an atom, then that's hydrogen. And it has what is called an atomic number. Atomic number is a fancy sciency word that just means how many protons are in the nucleus. Okay, because scientists like to impress people. They like to make people think they're smart. They like to show off by creating ridiculously compl complicated names. And uh, yeah, so uh, atomic number is one of those. Atomic number means how many protons are in the nucleus of an atom. If I have one, it's hydrogen. If I have two protons in the nucleus of an atom, then it's not hydrogen anymore. It's helium, okay? And the more I add, the more I change the atom. So for example, oxygen has eight. Uh, I, if I remember right, I think carbon has six, but I could be remembering incorrectly because uh, I don't have it memorized. But uh, the more protons I add into the nucleus, every time I add one proton, I change the type of atom and how it interacts with the environment. So oxygen, which is like this wonderful thing that we breathe, has eight protons and gold, which I honestly can't remember how many it has. So anyway, but oxygen has a totally different number of, uh, of protons than gold does. And uh, so they just by that one single fact, you change the number of protons, it changes it from something that's breathable and wonderful like oxygen, a gas, to gold, which at room temperature is a solid metal, okay, which is pretty amazing. It's, it's fascinating. It's mind-blowing that just changing a single proton in the nucleus will completely change what that how that atom is and how it looks and fills and the color and, you know, its hardness and how it interacts with the environment around it. So remember, if I change the number of protons in the nucleus, then I'm going to change the charge because every proton has a plus one charge. So if I have two protons, I'm going to have my charge is going to be like plus two, right? If I have eight protons, it's going to be plus eight. And as I fly through the universe as a clump of protons, I'm going to attract an equal number of electrons. So if I have eight protons, I'm going to attract eight electrons typically, although sometimes they are out of balance, and we call that an ion if they're out of balance. But an atom that is balanced is going to have the same number of protons as it has, or the same number of electrons as it has protons. Remember, the atomic number tells us how many protons there are, and that's the type of atom it is. All oxygen uh, atoms have the same number of protons. All carbon atoms have the same number of protons in their nucleus. And then the electrons that are orbiting around those protons are balanced, or at least they're trying to be balanced. Sometimes they're not, but they're trying to be balanced. So uh, the atom, the protons are going to attract, if there's eight protons, they're going to attract eight electrons. Now, the one thing we haven't mentioned yet are neutrons. What the heckins are neutrons and what they do? What do they do? Well, you will recall, and we said a minute ago, that opposites attract. But what do sames, samesies, what do samesnesses do? Things that are the same. Things that are not opposite. Okay, so if positive and negative attract, if you've ever played with a magnet, and that's not positive and negative, that's north and south. But uh, what do, if you turn south and south together, the same, what do they do? They repel and positives do the same thing. Positives repel. So how in the heckins am I going to get eight uh, protons to make oxygen to stick together in the middle of an atom if opposites repel? 
aren't those protons going to just fly apart from each other? And the answer is yes, they would. They would repel each other. So the only way that I can get them to stick together is with neutrons. Neutrons are glue. Okay, neutrons stick the protons together. And sometimes it takes uh, more neutrons to stick a proton together. And sometimes it takes less neutrons. For example, carbon uh, has like three different numbers of neutrons that you might find in the nucleus. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything about how carbon interacts with the environment. Okay, it's just how many neutrons happen to get stuck in that atom. So uh, some types of atoms are more consistent. Maybe they have it like uh, helium, for example, and they only have uh, one neutron. And others are going to have varying degrees of neutrons. But neutrons are just the glue that, ho that hold the proton together so that they don't fly apart because they're repelled from each other. Okay, so in the middle, the nucleus of an atom, I have this clump of protons and neutrons. Gluten, so protons glued together by the neutrons. And then orbiting around it, I have electrons that are attracted to the positive charge of the uh, protons because the electrons have a negative charge. And that is an atom. And depending on the number of protons, the atomic number tells me the number of protons. Okay, and that tells me what kind of atom it is. All atoms of a certain number of protons are the same type of atom. And that makes, that determines how it interacts with the universe uh, around it. And that is how three subatomic particles, pr protons, neutrons, and electrons combine to make vastly different things of different shapes and colors and sizes and textures and so on and so forth. That is how the universe is organized. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three. Three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your, uh, your science student. So sign up. Subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos, and they're much more targeted, and those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.